Welcome back to Warning 56K. If you have an interest in Wi-Fi technology, today we'll be discussing an interesting Wi-Fi war driving scanning app and database that I've personally been using for about the past four years now. Wiggle.net. In the cybersecurity world, the act of scanning for wireless Wi-Fi or access points is called war driving. In the past, typically done from a moving vehicle using a laptop or dedicated scanning device. With the advent of smartphones, war driving was quickly ported to include mobile devices as a scanning platform. The term war driving actually has a really neat origin, having its basis for one of my favorite movies of all time, the 1989 movie War Games, featuring Matthew Broderick. In the movie, Broderick's character uses his home computer to incrementally dial up random phone numbers searching for another modem or computer to hopefully answer which War Driving was born out of. Wiggle has been up and running since 2001. It's a simple app that you can download from the Google Play Store and can be run nearly on any Android-based smartphone made within the past decade. As of today, in 2023, over 14 billion Wi-Fi networks have been observed globally with Wiggle. To get something important out of the way before we begin, especially for those concerned with privacy, Wiggle does not collect any personal information, nor does it access the Wi-Fi network that it is scanning. All it does is collect the SSID, or the name of the network, the BSSID, or MAC address of the AP, the type of security implemented, and the DB, or decibel, energy that it detects from the AP. That's it. You can access the Wiggle.net website and view a global map of every Wi-Fi access point picked up by a Wiggle scanning device even ones in your own hometown. What's interesting is being able to track the implementation and deprecation of different wireless security technologies such as WEP, WPA, WPA2, and WPA3 encryption. You can even see the history of access points that had zero security implementation whatsoever, which started out at over half of Wi-Fi access points in 2004, but thankfully started dropping off around 2005 and has since leveled off to its current percentage of just over 2% of APs in the wild with no security at all. Rather than using your personal daily driver phone for scanning, which can rapidly deplete your battery, you can scan with one, two, three, or even four devices at the same time for more coverage. With older phones having slower processors, the less access points they'll be able to pick up due to slower scanning. Out of a numerous number of Android phones that I've personally tested with Wiggle, ranging from the Note 3 all the way up to the more recent Note 20, as well as the S3 up through the S7 line, the S7 line seems to have the most bang for the buck in capability. You can actually find several different flavors of the S7s on eBay for around the $50 range. To pinpoint the access point's location on a map, you may think that the app uses triangulation, which is based off of angles to find the source. What Wiggle actually uses is called trilateration, or the use of spherical distances based upon the dB, or signal strength, of the access point. The stronger the signal, the closer the AP. Conversely, the weaker the signal, the farther the AP. For instance, if you were driving down a road and picked up an access point, all the app knows is that the access point was detected at your position at that time at a given dB energy level. It has no idea if the AP was on the left or right side of the road. Now, if you were to backtrack and drive down the other side of the road from the opposite direction and Wiggle detected a drop in dB from the same access point, it would then know to place that AP's location as somewhere on the same side of the road as your original scan, since the dB level energy got weaker or farther. Conversely, if the dB level got stronger on your second scan from the other direction, it would then know to place the AP on the opposite side of the road as your original scan. It also works out well if you were to take a turn around a potential AP. Take a left and the AP gets weaker, it then knows it was most likely on the right side of the road. Take a right turn and it gets stronger or maintains DB strength, it now places the marker on the same side of the road. Over time, as you eventually backtrack over previously driven ground, the buildup of data overlaps and further fine tunes the AP's location on the map. This is where having multiple scanning devices in one vehicle can become helpful as each device scanning acts as its own individual drive past an AP. If you have four devices scanning, one drive past an AP is like making four passes in the same direction. Another added benefit of having multiple scanning devices is that the devices are not scanning all available channels at the same time. It scans them incrementally, 
one by one, and this takes time. So you may miss an AP due to the device scanning the upper channels while the AP is on a lower channel, or vice versa. Multiple scanning devices gives you a greater chance of one of the devices being on that right channel at the right time to snag that AP data. Over time, you'll see AP locations on the map float around a bit as the potential location is honed in on with more data. On Wiggle's website, you can view global statistics to see which users have gathered the most amount of APs total over the course of a month, making it somewhat of a competition among Wiggle enthusiasts. As an example, right now, me personally, I'm sitting within the top 90 of over 67,000 users in the world. In the end, whether you're just getting into cybersecurity, have a casual interest in wireless technology, or want to better fortify your own home network, Wiggle can be a fun exercise in becoming familiar with your wireless surroundings. The next time you take a trip to a big city, download the app and let it scan for a while as you drive around. Watching the AP numbers skyrocket can become addicting. Apartment complexes especially being like gold mines. Anyway, that's all we have for now covering the basics of Wiggle. I hope that you found this video interesting and maybe helped you find a use for that old Android phone that's been sitting useless in your drawer for the past few years. As always, if you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you for the next video.